So I was looking at my calendar to see how much more time I had before I had to play the Gregson, and it looks like I only have two weeks left. It's not really that much time left for how much I feel like I have to do, and so I'm just gonna dive in and explain this program that I made based on the recording that I shared in the previous episode. And we're just gonna talk about the decisions I made, why I made them, so that hopefully you can understand how I did this so you might be able to do it for yourself as well. So here we have the program that I wrote back in episode one of this series. You can see it's two weeks long and it includes these sections. I finished this a couple of days ago and uh, I wish I would have included a few more sections that were technical. Somehow a few of them got by, but that's all right. We're going to do the best we can with what we got. So now we want to dive into program two down here. So here's program two, and you can see that it is also a two week program. And now all of the sections are included are the entire piece of music. So instead of just extracting the difficult sections, I've now included everything so we can practice everything. And the way this is designed is first, you want to decide a frequency for the different sections, which just means how many times per week do you want to practice a given section. And you want to choose a goal tempo for each section. I just chose whatever Gregson wrote. Generally speaking, I adjusted a few tempos, but generally I chose what Gregson wrote in the part. And then you want to choose a volume or how many repetitions per practice session. So for all of these sections, I have a volume of two repetitions right here. So what I would consider this to be is a three by two, three days of frequency and two repetitions per day. This right here is a four by two four days of frequency and two repetitions per day. And this is a two by two, two days of frequency and two repetitions per day. So once you have all of these figures, the frequency and the goal tempo and the volume, you basically have everything you need to make a program. So the style of organization I'm working with here is an idea that I took from working out. Surprise, surprise, all of my ideas are taken from working out pretty much. But this idea is from a way of organizing your training where uh, the first thing you would do when working out is you would work up to a one rep max that was somewhere between 80 and 90 percent of your true one rep max from there after you watched the video of your lift and you assessed what kinds of things needed to be worked on you would then do some back off sets like three or four sets of three to five reps and the weight would be lighter and you would be able to work on whatever those weaknesses were and get some volume in as well so this progression right here is based on that same thing. So you can see the goal tempo for this first section is 96 beats per minute. And then on day one, week one, day one, I'm going to play the first repetition of the beginning of the piece uh, at 96, which is the goal tempo. And then you can see under here, it's a lower tempo. So the first repetition is at the goal, and then I would do some isolation in between, maybe slur some things or sing some things, buzz some things, mentally rehearse some things, whatever I feel like I need to do. And then my second repetition would be performed way under that tempo. The progression for the full two weeks you can see is just the first repetition is always at the goal. That's my top tempo. And then this repetition is 80% of that repetition. And then as it goes backwards this way, each of these repetitions is 4% less than the previous one. Or you could think of it as this repetition is 4% more than this one. This repetition is 4% more than that as it goes up. So the way that I chose these numbers here and how I organized all of it was I went back and listened to my recording and I was listening for certainly mistakes and other technical things that didn't necessarily go as well as I wanted it to. And then I was also listening for what things went well, what things already are in a good place and I may not have to spend a ton of time working on it. After that, the first thing I assigned was the frequency that I wanted to play each section based on what I heard in the recording. So the things that I messed up a lot or the technical things that still just did not seem like it was under my fingers, those would get a frequency of four because those are the most difficult sections. I want to see them the most. And then the sections that seemed like they were no problem at all, maybe some of the lyric sections or things that I remembered from my last time of preparing this, those got a frequency of two. I don't need to see them as often to feel as comfortable. And then sections that sort of sat in the middle. I felt like I did need some work, but they weren't necessarily completely horrible in the recording. I give those a frequency of three. The final 
component that I feel I should share because I think it actually makes a very big difference in how this all lays out over the course of a couple of weeks is you can see with this frequency of three, my programs are over the course of six days. So over six days, if I want to see something three times, it's going to show up every other day. And you can see that here. It shows up every other day. Well, the next time I have a three day per week frequency, I put it on the other three days. So that way, uh, the first timers are three days per week, the second time, the first time, the second time. You can see that I've tried to rotate them throughout the week. You can also see that with this two times per week, it shows up on day one and day four. The next two times per week shows up on day two and day five. And then the next two times per week shows up on day three and day six, and then it goes back to the start. So it just continues to rotate. I'm trying to do this so that the work is relatively even throughout the week. I don't want one day to have way more practicing than another day. If my schedule were such that I had a couple of free days and then the other days were so busy that I just couldn't practice, I would probably do this differently and try to load up those days that I have time to practice with more repetitions, more sections, and then hope that I could find some time on the other days that I was super busy to get a little bit of work in. If you're watching this and it seems like this is super complicated, I completely understand. When I first started doing this, I didn't really understand how to put it all together, I was just making my best guess. So even though I feel I've refined this kind of thing a lot over the years, when you're starting out, you just make the best guesses you can and you make the best choices you can. So I'm hoping that some of this discussion can get you started with making some good decisions that might actually lead you to being organized and effective with your work. It's an interesting feeling I experienced when I realized I only had two weeks left to prepare. In my mind, somehow I had it all worked out that I was going to have a full six weeks to prepare and everything was going to be easy and amazing or whatever. But when I saw there was two weeks and then the performance, I kind of started freaking out. I started to worry that it wasn't going to be enough time and I had so much to do. And then, you know, when I made the program and I saw all of my practice laid out for two weeks, I felt better. And it's pretty cool to me to still be experiencing the benefits of writing these programs, not only in terms of practice efficiency or effectiveness, but also just in terms of the peace of mind it can give me that no matter what happens, I have a plan and I gotta stick to my plan and get the most out of it. So that's a pretty cool feeling. Thought I would just share that. Also, uh, if you are interested in knowing where I got some of this information and maybe what has inspired me to write these programs and to understand how to use them, this book, Peak, The Secrets from the New Science of Expertise by Anders Ericsson, pretty much changed my entire life and I cannot recommend it enough.